It'll mess you up. Just because you bridled your tongue don't mean you fixed your heart. You got to, I, I said this in other sermons, I almost think you got to let yourself come out so your heart gets fixed. Because when you vomit it out, it's right in front of you. You go, ooh, that is ugly. You need to see it for yourself. I'm not telling you. But then, you know, that's what had to happen to Peter. He had to make an idiot out of himself in front of everybody and lie and cuss so he could see what was in him. He couldn't see it until it came out in a place where he couldn't hide it by himself. See, you can lie to yourself at the house, but you can't lie to yourself when it comes out in public. When it comes out in public, it's in your face and everybody sees it. And it really, they're, what they think doesn't matter. It's the fact that you know it is what really matters. So it's good to vomit in public. How do you like that? Don't, you can tell everybody I said that. Put it out on Facebook. I'm joking. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just playing. But you get my point. If it comes out of you, you know it's there. That's why you got to have an environment where people can be themselves. I'm not pushing sin. I'm pushing deliverance. There's a deliverance anointing in the house, so this is supposed to be a place for that to happen. That's why you have apostle, prophet, and one of them got a del apostle cast out devils. Prophetic people, they, they go, I see you. <laughs> they already know it's there. They go, shh, right after it. It's a combination for freedom. It's deliberately set up that way. God, God does it. So God wants corporate faith. Like I said, this was a location meeting. Now, when you're going to get in a real fight and take land, you've got to have a location meeting. If you, this is, this is, a, it's scary. You know what's more scary than a location meeting, thinking everybody's going to leave when you have a location meeting? Going to war and them going to AWOL once you pick a fight. That's more scary than the other. You think you're scared when you tell them and you're worried about everybody going out? No, no, no. Get really scared if you don't know their heart and you just picked a fight with a giant. Because they'll abandon you. You might as well, you know, I said this before in the car business. I learned this in the car business. I, I know that's all. I, I use those illustrations, but that's where the Lord taught me. I'll do this real quick again. You buy a car for 10 grand. You make a mistake, it's only worth 8,800. Okay? You made a mistake. It's your fault. You're the buyer. It's done. You paid too much for it. That is not the customer's fault. They offer you 8,800. Your ego's involved. And you say, bless God, I ain't taking less than $10,000. Well, a year and a half goes by and somebody offers you six. Your first losses are your best losses. When you do something wrong, it's over. Cut the loss and get moving. If you're in unforgiveness, cut the loss of your ego. Get out of there because it's just going to get so expensive. It'll take everything you got if you don't let go of it. And that's for forgiveness. That's for your anything that has to do with your ego and pride. Cost more than you can pay. You don't have enough resources to pay for pride. And every day you delay, it's another spiritual dollar. I hope that don't sound crazy. Do you, do you, every day you wait, it's going to cost you more of your life. You know, life really isn't that long. If it was 500 years, it's still not long. Look how quick it goes. It's not that long. How many years? I hope it ain't 40, because that's what they did. Do you want to wait to say God's right and I'm wrong? I need to get out of here. I relinquish my rights to take up his forgiveness. But they did this. It doesn't matter what they did. Are you willing to forgive and keep? You know what? Please forgive me. If they won't, if the person that beat you up don't change and you forgive them, you're going to pass them up eventually anyway. So don't worry. It works. You, they'll be stuck, but you won't. Now, if you're going to hang around there and go, till they do this, you're stuck. You're just hooked to them like this. You can't get loose either. Now you've got two people in the hole. When you release them, you get the grace to get out. And God will wash you up and clean up some details before he lets you out. But when you release them, you're already free.
Amen. So after that location meeting, uh, they, did, they didn't get to go. Do you know, I, I know this about God because I just know this side of him. I'm not saying I know everything about God. I know everything about God. But I know this side of him. Anytime I've ever changed my mind and repented, I got to go do it. In other words, if they would have repented at some point in those 40 years, I truly believe with my whole heart, even though God said one thing, if God repented of what he said once, he'd probably repent of what he said twice. Because he's just that kind of God. If you pray and you repent, somewhere in your 40-year span of stubbornness, God would change his mind and take you into the promised land. He's that good. He'll, he doesn't lie. He just, he's allowed to change. He's sovereign. He's allowed, when your kids, you were going to do something for your kids and they break everything and do everything bad and then you just tell them they're not going to get it. If you decide to give it to them later, are you a liar? So you can't put God in that religious box. God gave me a word. Did you obey him? Because if you didn't obey him, the word's just standing. You're going to die. Get your house in order. Fifteen more years, son. <laughs> God can change his mind. And it doesn't mean he lies. Religious people, this is, this is a tough one too. A couple corks. You said, I'm thinking, but you was like that then. <laughs> I changed my mind. I'm not fickle, I'm not lying. I changed my mind because the circumstances are different now than they were then. Why can't I change my mind? It, I mean, we talked about preparing food and preparing water. And I said, you should. But I said, pray, pray. And I said, if you don't need the water and you don't need the food, you succeeded. If you stored it and you don't need it, glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't have to go through a calamity. We prayed our way through. I got some resources to do something else with and I'm good. If you don't understand it, you, well, you, you want to hang on to that prophetic word of doom? Well, God said. Why pray then? Let's just forget it. If it's just going to be about what he said without prayer... We're all predestined then, right? We're just robots. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. David prayed right up to the end, and when the child was dead, he washed his face. But he pray, even though God said those bad things was going to happen to David, David kept praying because he knew enough about God that God could change his mind. And when God didn't, then did you notice what David did? Washed up, kept moving. He went on with his life. He didn't try to fix that which could not be fixed. He was willing to let go and keep going. Amen. You don't want to live backwards. You know what they did? It's, it's funny. In 14.1, it says, that all crying lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept all night long. Now that sounds really tough when people cry and weep, but you know what that is? That's confidently wrong. They're crying and they're missing everything. You think that, that's why you can't be moved. You can be crying, weep, and be as wrong as the day is long. Oh, it's bad. Doesn't mean a thing if it's not the right thing. You can cry, you can weep, you can make a big commotion, but that's not it. If you haven't repented, first you get hurt, and if you don't repent, you murmur. You complain and you accuse. That means a spiritual pattern would be hurt, accusation, rebellion, because they went from being hurt and crying to complaining against Moses and then accusing Moses, which accusation is rocks. When you begin to accuse people, it's like throwing a rock at them. So they had a three, remember first in, in New Testament I said, First, uh, what it was, betrayal, hatred, and then murder. See, what you don't understand, when you don't deal with it, there's a progressive destruction that comes. They, the way they viewed it, here, that's funny. All that's over because they didn't want to go forward. 
You realize that? All of that. All of that. All of being stuck. All of that complaining. All about wanting to stone Moses and get another leader was all because they didn't want to go forward. When you took a broom and swept off all the trash, they didn't want to go forward. That's all it meant. Some of them were afraid. Some people don't like the work. Some people don't like the responsibility. It just depends on what their makeup is. But all of it was cause they would not go forward. You, there is no place to hang out forever. You have to go forward. You got something you don't like about yourself, you're going to have to plow right into it eventually. You got something you don't like about the church, you're going to have to plow right into it, either get it right or get out. That's just life. Your marriage is the same way. I hate to talk like that, but it is what it is. You got to plow into it. God just waits all them years hoping people come to their senses because he don't want to lose any. Jesus has said it. He says, I've not lost one that you've given me. He did a really good job, didn't he? He's able to say that. So they wanted to go, then you want to go backwards. I like the way it was. We need to do it this way like it used to be. Those are words of an enemy. You really want to go back to what you used to be like? I'm not interested. All that pain to learn, the, the things that I've learned, the pain and the brokenheartedness where I was confidently wrong and had to change and get, do I want to need to go through that again? At that level, at least I can learn something new the next time. But I certainly don't want to go around the same mountain for 40 years. At least if I'm going to have affliction and pain to learn, at least I can do is learn something new. Why do I want to go around the same old circle and have the same old pain? I need some, <laughs> I need some new pain. Something that creates something else, a change. So they want to go back. Now, this is so funny. Caleb, first, uh, it affected the leadership so bad that they fell on the ground and started praying. It says, verse 5, they fell before all the assembly of the congregation, the children of Israel. As soon as Moses heard them talking, he just, he just fell down. Now, Joshua and Caleb start ripping their clothes. <laughs> you think that's intense? I think that that happens privately that nobody knows about it with leaders. When they're trying to move people along, the pain they have, trying to move stubborn, stiff-necked people into a vision when God wants to do something to take the land. Think about that. I bet there's been some rent closed privately. I bet there's been some knee falling privately from leaders trying to move that kind of people. I'm not interested in being that kind of people, ever. If I'm going to be in the way of God, I probably don't need to be here. And I mean the planet. <laughs> like, like, do you really want to be in God's way of a move? Think about what we're saying here today. Do you want to be found Opposing the purpose of God. I'm not saying this to get you to do one thing. I'm asking you to question your life. Remember in other sermons I said, stubbornness is as the sin of witchcraft. So these guys ripped their clothes and everything else. You ever been that mad? Oh, I have. I'll just say it. I hate to say it, but I have been that mad. I've thought, about, oh, look out. Aren't you glad you don't do everything the first time you think it? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you for a delay in time. <laughs> thank you for a pause. Sometimes you, you need a pause, right? You go adjust yourself. Go hang out with God. What's funny, and now we're going to 14.9, and I will be closing. Caleb saying, don't rebel, only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense has, listen, their defense has departed from them. 
and the Lord is with us. Boy, if you could ever learn that right there. You realize what a nugget that is? See, I just get the biggest nugget out of that. When I go to do what he tells me to do, their defense is gone. I got, I'm coming in because their defense is down. You know, you know what the problem with defenses are down? When they're down, nobody usually knows they're down. Just like Samson didn't know he didn't have his anointing. He got up and shook himself off as before, but he didn't have the power to get himself loose. And uh, this is what, this is the difference. This is how you know you can't correct people. This is, the, this is right here. This is the, when they do this, there's nothing to talk about. You can just walk out of the room and never talk again. It doesn't matter because they have to have an experience. It says here, and the Lord said unto Moses, well, excuse me, I went too far. Verse 10, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones. When you correct somebody and they pick up a rock and they go to throw it at you because you corrected them, it's over. It's done. It's finished. But you... Who's... Is it Moses that's talking? Is it dad that's talking to the kid? Is it the boss talking to the employee? When you correct people and they pull their revolver out and start to accuse you or their rock pile, you can end that conversation. It's done. You're not going to convince them. You're not going to get anywhere. You drop that ball. Because they're not in a position to hear you. Then God's the next step, God gets in. You want to know the next step? I always do. I got no next step. Am I wearing you out? I hope I'm not. This is the real stuff. This stuff makes you successful, not condemned. This is, it's all what side of the word you're going to be on. See, I'm looking for to succeed. I'm not looking to fail. So I don't feel condemnation when I find the truth. I thank God for the enlightenment so I can get out. Let me tell you something. When you start really making a difference for, the, for hell, backing it up, that's, he's going to use anything in your head that he can. You're going to want to die. You're going to want to quit. You're going to... I'm sorry, I can't make that go away. That's called a fight. That's called a good fight. That's a good fight. That's why you got to stay covered. Got to have a pastor. Got to have somebody pray for you. Got to help you rebuke up devils. Because when you're doing a good job, you need really covered. Right? You need covered. When you're doing something, driving the devil backwards, you need it covered properly to be safe. Anybody independent gets beat up if it's a real fight. Now, if it's not a real fight, the devil will let him look independent and not hurt anything because if he does, every, it, they don't have to listen. Why do I? I mean, he's, that's, he thinks that he's a strategist all the time. If, he'll, if, you're not, if you're doing stuff and you're not submitted, he'll, make, he'll try to do his best to make sure you get it done because he don't want anybody else to be submitted. But when you decide to get in the fight as a corporate body, you're going to need covered. Because a lone ranger isn't as a threat anywhere near as much as a full-blown army going into the promised land to drive out the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amalekites, and every other enemy there is. Now you've got a problem because they're going to take dominion. Okay, I've said enough for the day. I hope, I'm trying to paint a picture of what the church is and what it, see, you've got to understand, in my heart, I see pastors deposited around the region, around the state. Some of them are in the room. I see dominion. I don't, I don't see church. Please forgive me. I don't see a church service. I do, but I don't. I see warriors. I see people that are growing in the spirit. Whatever church is, it is. But I see people that got God inside of them and things that he wants them to do and, and, and anointings and gifts. And I'm, my goal in life is to help facilitate that to where people do that and we start to, to change this world for God. It's not just to go to church to feel good to go home. I hope it doesn't sound bad. It's not. It's not. It's equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. That's the goal. And, I, and it comes through order and comes through protocol. And I didn't write that. The Lord wrote that. And I got nothing in the book. He wrote it. I just re-preach it and I try to obey it. If you would, stand to your feet this morning. 
You realize that means every home cell means something. Every ministry means something. And I don't care what it looks like. I don't. If I cared what things looked like, I'd have went home a long time ago. I'd have went home a long time ago. It's just like that thing I told you with the adoption of my grandson. I got the word that night and I went to sleep and I, I hate to say this, but I never was tormented over it since because I had the word. The word is what let me sleep at night. You having trouble sleeping? Examine what he told you. If you're caring about something you can't control and it's gonna take him, why should you carry that care? Release those cares this morning. Release those things that you're worried about. Trust that God has got you. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Father, we just worship you. We honor you. We thank you for life. God, every day is a gift. Every breath is a gift. Every child is a gift. Even our friendships, Lord, whether they're rough or not, those people are gifts from God. Father, we thank you corporately this morning that you are building a corporation. Not in, not in the world's mindset, but a corporate body that moves together as one in the name of Jesus with the head and you as the top head. Lord, you're the chief shepherd. Everybody under you is an under shepherd, Lord. You are the chief shepherd and someday you will appear and give crowns and rewards to your people who have done what you asked them to do. But I thank you, God, that a corporate anointing comes into this house right now, drives out every devil that's tried to ruin it in the name of Jesus, that brokenness comes to us and will willingly let go of what we thought we had rights to this morning. We let go of it, God, by faith in the name of Jesus. We will not be hooked by chains and fetters and die in this desert that will take the land where our lives, I'm prophesying and talking, our lives will be balanced between work, family, and God's work in the name of Jesus. We'll all do something for God in the right balance and the body ministry will work right in the name of Jesus. We decree it, we declare it to be so that everybody fill their hole in this house. And it'd be a solid house. More solid than it is, God. A build on this foundation, not wood, hay, and stubble. Build on this foundation, solid block, rock, bona fide building that the gates of hell will not prevail against in the name of Jesus. When the storm comes, they'll beat on the house, God, but I thank you it doesn't go any place. Father, I thank you we'll take this anointing because of the obedience of the people. This anointing will be able to be deposited in other pastors around this region, other apostles around this region, that their churches will flourish because the builder has come to help them build in the name of Jesus. We bless you and honor you this morning, God. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, God. Father, I speak good things. All that, on that, on that offering, there was anointing. Just, just, just try to pay attention. Like, I can't tell you how God's gonna do what he's gonna do for you. But just remember, you're, you're in a debt-free anointing. I didn't give myself that anointing. That comes from God. He worked it in me for 30 years, so it's, it's not like it was an overnight big learning. All of a sudden you got, no, no, no. I had to fight fights. Some of you are anointed to impart other things. It doesn't mean this anointing is special or greater. It just happens to be the one I got. You got yours. We want yours too. You understand? We need it. The body needs it. But don't disregard that dead free anointing. I don't care what it looks like in your life. Do not disregard it. You hold it. You nurture it. You feed it. And you cultivate it. And try it. Use it.
Don't borrow something. One. Don't, don't even, you know, you're going to laugh. I wasn't allowed to borrow a tool from nobody for years for a while when God was teaching me to de depend on him. Now that's how small it can get. You know, people think you're talking about little details and see what they don't understand. It's the small things that make you a success in the big things. It's a spirit you're trying to defeat, not the tool. It's a spirit that you're trying to defeat. A lot of people think you're in pride because you won't borrow and they, uh, from people. They don't know you're trying to break something, that dependency in your life that's disgusting to you. God, I pray that anointing this morning all over them. I speak to their bodies. Father, in the name of Jesus, every organ working, every pancreas working, in the name of Jesus, every esophagus working right, swallowing right in Jesus' name. Thyroids, I command you to function according to the word of God this morning. In the name of Jesus, wombs receive seed for pregnancy. I call it done in Jesus' name. I command everything to die in our bodies that is not of God and our bodies live in Jesus' name. I command it and to be so, and I decree it. Thank you, Lord. I command every thought, I command every thought to expose itself that it has exalted itself above the knowledge of God. I thank you that the word that is in our spirit and in our head will pull down the stronghold of that thought cast it down to the ground and replace it with the word in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We bless you this morning. We honor you. We love you. We trust you. We believe in you. We're looking for ways to depend on you, God. Thank you for our life and our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God a hand clap one more time. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord.